Alrighty guys, well, welcome to the video. So today what I wanted to do is go over a topic that I haven't really covered in this channel, and that is permissions and security in Windows. The reason why I wanted to make this video is because it actually will help you understand the fundamental structure for how Windows keeps you from changing certain things and how it protects you from certain things as well. So most of the time, if you want to make a change to something in Windows, a lot of the time, if it's a protected service, which means something that has um, more restrictions on it, like let's say the antivirus, if the antivirus didn't have any restrictions or protections, then the virus could just delete the antivirus because it would have no restrictions, right? So that's where restrictions come in handy. But the problem is, is that if I need to do something and I understand the risks of what I'm doing, then I should just be able to change it and I should be able to do that reasonably easily. I want to go into, say, a service like Windows Security Service runs in the background all the time. I can't change this actually at all because I, even when I run it as an administrator, I don't own this actual file or this actual service because I'm not actually a trusted installer or I'm not a system service. So the service and tool that I wanted to show you today is a cool little tool that allows you to get around a lot of these restrictions because all that it does is it lets you run applications and certain commands as if you were the actual trusted installer or the service that you so choose to do. So then if we just open up services.msc, same location, you'll notice that it will let you finally actually just change it as if you had full control. Normally you can't run something as trusted installer from Windows by default. It's sort of essentially, you're not really meant to be able to control something as the trusted installer, because then obviously it could be exploited the same way that running something in as an administrator is exploited. And so now I can change that and I can hit apply and it doesn't fight me or restrict me. So that's the first cool trick is that if you run certain services or apps or files, as a different service or a protected service, you can take permission over them and then modify them however you like. And so one of the most annoying things that people try to do when they first install Windows on their system is do something like remove Edge because most people just generally prefer Chrome or something else like Firefox. And so the problem is, is that if I go into the settings of my system, and I want to actually uninstall Edge, depending on where you live, you might not even be able to do that. So for example, if you live in the US, this uninstall button isn't even available to click. And the modify button doesn't do anything but just let you repair it or turn it back on. And so this is gonna be the cool trick to show you guys how to get around that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna close out of this, we're gonna open up the registry, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to this tree right here. And I'll post it in the comments section as well and in the description. And we're going to change one of these to no remove set to zero. If you can't change this or it gives you an error, open up and sudo and run it as a trusted installer because there's a 50-50 chance that it's actually protected for you or not. So if once you do no remove, that's going to allow the button to actually be accessible to click. But the problem is, is that, again, depending on where you live, this button doesn't just do anything. Once I click on install, it will still stay there and it won't remove itself. So now we're gonna do the next step, which is going to explain another cool trick where if I want to open up a specific service, sometimes the problem is that I don't actually have a service or a tool that can allow me to activate it as a trusted installer. So here's a cool trick. If we open up Notepad, what we can do is we can run a notepad as the trusted installer. Now, why does this matter? Because if we go to this specific part of the system, Windows, and then we go down to System32, this is the file that actually is what allows the uninstall process to start. Because without this change, you actually can't do anything. And so it's a huge problem because, well, if you want to remove Edge or you want to remove a certain service that is protected and not allowed to be changed, it could be a bit frustrating. Then what we're going to do is, if we check the properties right now, it's owned by me. But a lot of the time, it'll be owned by a trusted installer, almost always, actually, now that I think about it. So normally, if I want to modify this file, if I go into Notepad, for example, 
this is what will happen. I'm gonna quickly change this back to kind of show you guys what actually it looks like from the other side of what you probably will be running into. So trusted installer, and then we let that run, we hit apply, real good, pulls out of these windows. Now I'm gonna open up a notepad, not as the trusted installer, but we're gonna to go to that same file and folder location. And then we're just gonna do all files. And then we're gonna look for that one in the eye. And that one's gonna be called integrated. If we open it, we can see stuff and we can actually see what's actually happening. The file part you wanna change is this part here that I've highlighted and change it to enabled because this essentially is controlling the ability to make edge uninstallable. But because I'm not actually the owner of this file, if I hit save, it won't let me. It won't just change the file because it's owned by trusted installer. And so then I have to save this in a different location and I have to save it as a different part of the system. And then I have to grant myself permissions, just like how I showed you guys just barely where I changed it to trusted installer. I'd have to do that for myself for every single protected system file folder service. And it can be a nightmare to do this because if you change the permissions, sometimes it causes errors down the road. So that's why it's usually best to not change the default permissions, but instead to run as the permissioned user that can change them. Because if Windows needs to change it, it actually has control and it's not you locking everything else out. So now if I say wanted to go and try and remove this file, well, the problem is that it won't let me remove it either way. Because again, it's all the same protections and system security information all set up. So then if I try and do delete, won't let me. Why? Because I don't own it. And you'll get a little error notification and a pop-up as well. But because we have a trusted installer folder here, we can delete it if we'd like. Don't know why you do that because, well, you don't really need to. And so we're going to go back to that location, pull it up here one more time, and then we're going to actually change it the way that you're supposed to. And this will allow you to finally uninstall Edge because this is one of the most obscured and not talked about tips online. And I wanted to show you guys the tips on how to do it. Because if you look up online, most people give the very vague ways of doing it or they recommend to delete the file of Edge inside of a completely different part of the system. And it's not the actual proper way. It's essentially a hack workaround. So we're going to select this file and we're going to do enabled just like I showed before. And then we're just gonna save it and that's it. Now, if I want to actually uninstall Edge, the button will actually open up that prompt. And once we hit uninstall here, that removes it the proper way. No hacks, no, no quirks, no workarounds, no tricks or things that are essentially outside of what would be considered uh, overall safe. Because if I wanna bring Edge back, I can just install it from online, or I can just not have Edge if I so choose. And if Windows needs to change this back for whatever reason, that's okay, because I haven't changed the permissions of it. I just take parts of the file or the service or whatever it is. And so, yeah, guys, that's the tip and that's the tricks of Windows permissions and security. And that's why the reason why I wanted to show you guys this video, because it's such an interesting and cool uh, quirk of Windows and this type of service. I'll post it in the description to a GitHub link as well. One last one, just as a fun uh, example again of how much time it saves, is if we go into the actual event viewer, this is a error that everyone will always get on their system or at least a warning of it. And if you check your event viewer, it'll be the same thing. So if you just go to here, event viewer, and then you just pull this up. If you go into this actual part of the system, administrative events, you'll get these distributed com errors with these IDs right here that are super obscure. And it's basically saying that the local service, which is a user, has no permission to do local activation. Super obscure, super weird. But the problem is, is that sometimes there will be so many of these constantly writing to the event log, even though they shouldn't it should just be something that is fixed but windows always has bugs and issues so what we're going to do is i'm going to show you one last way of how to actually get around the issues that this can cause 
Because if I wanted to do this the normal way, I would have to open up the registry and then I would have to go all the way from here and then go to app ID and then copy that actual identification right here because this is the app ID itself, paste it. And then I, if I want to change anything about this, it won't let me. I can't do anything. I can't modify this file. And then once I want to actually fix the problem, I have to go into this certain app called Component Services, and it's just right here, it's the name for it. If I go into Component Services, we already saw that the name for the app was Shell Service Host. Well, if we go into here and check that area, scroll down to Shell Service Host, the problem is, is that I can only change the security permissions for this part of the system if I actually have ownership of these folders and files. So I have to do it for both files and both folders. That means that I have to go into, again, the registry in here, change the permissions for this ID, change it to me, go to here, hit apply, do all that stuff all over again, go into the CLS ID and then do it all over again. And then the problem is, is that I've now permanently changed that permission. And so sometimes you get really weird errors, sometimes very late in the road, but here's the actual trick now. So instead of doing all of that, wasting so much time that completely makes no sense as to why the warning is even there. I don't know why it just isn't fixed because it's always there since forever. Um, and that's the problem is that these things are always existent inside the system. So now we're going to open component services as the trusted installer. We're going to go to shell service host, properties, security. And now you'll notice that it doesn't give me any errors and these are actually customizable. We saved ourselves a bunch of time changing files in random folders. And now we can just go into edit, just to remove, just basically saying the default permissions. And then we go to local service and then we can just add it in there. And then we can do local launch, local activation, hit okay. And then we can check back, make sure it's there. Yep. And then we go to local as well. You can just do LOC. That's what I do and do local service. Add that in there, hit okay, hit apply. And once you restart, that warning will be gone. So there are a bunch of different tips, tricks, and ways to use this small little app that not only help you in the long run because you're not changing permissions of files from what they are supposed to be normally, but you're also having the ability to make sure that if you want to change something, you aren't as restricted anymore. Most of the time, the installer is the one that actually has the most control in the system. And so that's the problem is that it is the one that always has all of the ability to do most of the hard things that most people can't figure out online. And so, yeah, guys, that's the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you thought that this was actually a useful video. Um, if you guys like this kind of style where I show you more of the interesting tools rather than just optimizations and performance stuff, let me know and we'll see where this goes. But overall, hopefully this was at least educational and if not useful for you, because I know that there are a lot of people that have multiple of these issues and they just want to get rid of one simple thing and they would rather not have to go and look at a 20 minute guide online on how to do it. So yeah, that's it guys. Have a good one. My name's Avatarix and I'm out.